scientists may be able to diagnose CTE in players before death. Researchers may have found a way to diagnose CTE in football players while they are still alive. CTE is a progressive brain disease caused by repeated trauma to the head. It usually shows up years after taking repeated blows. Currently, CTE can only be diagnosed through an autopsy. Researchers at Boston University wanted to look for other markers and found people with CTE had elevated levels of the protein CLL11 in both spinal fluid and blood around the brain. Researchers believe the CLL11 protein helps the smallest blood vessels in the brain transport oxygen. Higher levels of CLL11 could mean these blood vessels are leaking, which may lead to CTE symptoms. The team at Boston University is now working with a biotech company to develop a blood test to detect CLL11 and diagnose living players. More research still needs to be conducted on the CLL11 protein to confirm it isn't linked with other kinds of neurodegenerative diseases. There's no cure for CTE, but early diagnosis could give players a chance to mitigate the disease, aka retire. It's good! Flexible NFL Helmet, designed to reduce concussions. This NFL season, about 70 players are wearing a new state-of-the-art helmet designed to lower the risk of concussions. The Vices Zero One was specifically designed to soften the blows NFL players take to their heads during games. The helmet is made of four different protective layers. The outer shell is made from flexible thermoplastic that compresses to absorb shock, then rebounds, much like a car bumper. Next is a layer of more than 500 polymer columns that can twist and move laterally, reducing the impact of rotational acceleration, a major cause of concussions. Underneath that is a hard inner shell that helps prevent skull fractures and brain hemorrhages. Below that, a layer of memory foam provides the player comfort. About half of NFL teams have put in orders for the Vice's helmet. NFL players get to choose their own helmet from an approved NFL list. The league has been looking to address concussions, especially as it has faced increasing scrutiny. Medical experts and players are concerned that repeated concussions increase the likelihood of developing CTE, a degenerative brain disease. Trump tried to criticize the NFL and NBA. It backfired. President Trump criticized NFL players who lodged protests during the national anthem and encouraged offended snowflakes to walk out of games. Last Friday at one of his campaign rallies in Alabama, Shakespeare said this. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say, get that son of a off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired. Trump whined that the protests are hurting the game. The commander and cheese also said referees are ruining the game by calling 15-yard penalties for beautiful tackles. What happened next? The entire athletic world, even douchey NFL owners, joined together in solidarity and gave Trump the collective middle finger. Teams and NFL owners across the league on Sunday gave an unprecedented show of solidarity and support during the pregame anthem. In other hilarious sports news, Trump also decided to uninvite the NBA champion Golden State Warriors to the White House while singling out Stephen Curry for having doubts. Only problem is, it was already public knowledge the Warriors had already decided they weren't going to Washington. Players young and old from all over the sporting world have come out to blast the small hands in chief. So basically, Trump thought he could pander to his angry base and get some laughs. Instead, he just galvanized a movement. Well played, Mr. President. Well played indeed. How small changes to a football helmet could prevent injuries on the field. Football faces harsh criticism as it's become alarmingly clear that a large number of football players, both professional and those who aren't, suffer from the long-term effects of head traumas that originate on the field. While some argue that the rules of the game and football culture itself need to change, others are experimenting with modifying something relatively more simple, the helmet. A standard football helmet has two layers, a hard outer shell and an inner layer of padding that's usually made of foam. The human brain is protected by a layer of fluid within the skull. However, that layer doesn't provide enough protection during sudden or forceful impacts, and that's how concussions happen. A typical helmet has several inches of padding inside that slows the acceleration of a direct hit and weakens the force of an impact. Some companies have experimented with putting another layer of padding outside the helmet that can further weaken the force of a hard impact. 
but that doesn't help against hits from the side that could rotate a player's head, twisting the person's brainstem. This damages the nerves there. A prototype helmet called Zero One has several layers of padding. A malleable outer layer bends inward during direct hits. The layer underneath bends at an angle during rotational hits. Football helmets are not perfect and it's unlikely they'll ever be able to prevent every type of head injury that could happen on the field. But they've come a long way from here. NFL report confirms Patriots knew about deflated footballs. A 243-page report released by the NFL on Wednesday has revealed it is more than probable than not that the New England Patriots personnel deliberately deflated footballs below league standards. A regulation NFL football has to be inflated between 12.5 to 13.5 pounds per inch. 11 footballs tested during the AFC Championship game in January were found to be significantly underinflated. A New England Patriots locker room attendant and equipment assistant are believed to have released air from 11 to 12 game balls with Patriots quarterback Tom Brady aware of the deflation. Deflated balls are easy to throw, catch, and grip than standard regulation footballs. The report separately determined that Patriots had not deliberately tried to introduce any improper football for kicking and cleared kicker Stephen Goskowski for any wrongdoing. A member of the Indianapolis Colts, whom the Patriots defeated 45-7, to gave officials a ball that was underinflated during halftime. The report said only three Patriot members knew about the underdeflated balls. The league previously fined the Patriots and forced them to forfeit a first-round draft pick after a staff member was caught videotaping signals by New York Jets coaches during a 2007 game. The NFL has yet to take any disciplinary action in light of the report.